Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Serena and I love to read and I hope you're here because you love to read too. This is my first monthly what I read this month. What I read this month. Month? Because I just started this channel and it kind of came out of the blue, I actually didn't end up reading as many books. It's usually between like seven to ten but this time it was just about five i didn't dnf a lot of books but i definitely started a lot of books um but i won't be talking about those i will be talking about the books that i completely finished so i read five books this month and i'm just looking through my story graphs to see which one i read first because i don't remember it's so weird because the month just goes by so fast and then that's it so the first book i read i actually don't have it here because i borrowed it from the library and that book is i'm gonna put it here <laughs> finley donovan jumps the gun by l cosimano so this is the third book in the series finley donovan i read the first two books actually at the beginning of the year the first two, I really like them. I think I gave the first one five stars. I may have given the second one five stars. Actually, no. The second one, I gave four stars. And then this one, I gave a 3.5. I didn't like it as much. I don't know if it's because I read them back to back like so quickly and maybe i was just kind of over it by the time i got to the third one and i read it at the beginning of this month so i can't 100 percent remember what happened yeah i felt by the third book that although yes the first and second were you know how likely is this to happen in real life this would never happen in real life the third book just kind of felt wishy-washy i don't know if that makes any sense it just felt a little bit more like things were dragging on and i thought that this was the last book in the series when i read the end i was kind of disappointed that there's a fourth book because i was going in hoping that it would there would be a finale to this finally it is obviously fiction it just felt like things were getting a little bit too dramatic and nothing was really progressing it seemed like everything was just put into place perfectly for the character to not miss it and for me like it's obvious when you're just doing that it's obvious when you're kind of just placing evidence for characters to find so easily and then the fact that, you know, there's going to be a fourth book, it just feels like those kinds of elements will just be dragged on. So I don't know if I would even pick up the fourth book, to be honest. I was really hoping that this was the third and final book. And so it kind of disappointed me. Yeah, this was a 3.5. I didn't want to give it a 3 because it wasn't a bad book. It just, I, I think I'm finished. With it for now so yeah that was finley donovan which finley donovan was this finley donovan jumps the gun the next book that i read and i have it here is the golden spoon by jessa maxwell i i well firstly i love this cover with the spoon and you know the blood and then like the big like manor house at the front i like the vibes of this book if you like What's that show called again? If you like the great British baking show in Canada, the great Canadian baking show? The, in Canada, the great Canadian baking show. And America, I don't know what's called, probably just the great baking show. If you like baking competition shows and you like only murders in the building, then you'll like this. It's like the two put together in this one book. Now, mind you, I think I ended up giving this book, how much did I, this book was like a five. At the beginning, I was like, yeah, this is a five, this is a five. Like I was reading it and I was like, oh my God, 
gosh, this lip vibe is amazing. I love this. I love this. However, by the end, the end ended up disappointing me a little bit. And again, I, I don't want to give away any spoilers. I did ended up giving a 3.5. So it's like, I don't want that to, to deter anybody from picking it up if they like these vibes because it is still a very good book and I really like it. So it's pretty much these about these competitors who are um, selected to be on their version. What is their show called? Bake Week. The bakers are selected to be on the show Bake Week that is hosted by the most celebrated baker and host of the show, Betsy Martin. Betsy Martin has competition from another host who comes on to the scene as well. She has always only been the solo host of the Bake Week show, but they decide to bring in a secondary host as well, which then ensues some kind of tension. And then sabotage starts to take place during filming and then a murder happens. This was a good book. The ending kind of, I also listened to it, listened and read at the same time. And yeah, this is, it's, it's good. If you like, again, if you like baking shows and you like only murders in the building, then I think you'll enjoy this book and I think you'll enjoy the vibes of this book because it de it definitely gave me only murder vibes, which was nice because I really liked that show. It was a very good show. The next book that I read this month was Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. And I really, really like this book. There are some tough scenes in here for me that I just had to kind of put the book down and walk away and it took me a long time a few times like maybe a few days like just to come back to it because there was a lot of sadness in here and at some point I was getting my period and I was like I can't do sadness this week so I had to kind of set it aside so we're following Wallace who has just died um that's right at the beginning it's not a spoiler he has just died and in his life he was never a really nice person and he ends up at a tea shop where he meets uh, Hugo, who is supposed to help him cross over to the next place. So he's kind of, they're kind of like in this, the people who die and end up at this tea shop are kind of like in a sort of limbo because they can't really leave the tea shop and they're not ready yet to go to the next Place. We meet a lot of other characters as well who have died and who are in this sort of limbo and Wallace starts to care about them, starts to help them and he starts to think about the kind of person he was in life. How he himself has changed in this being in this limbo, you know, he's not as um, selfish anymore. He's becoming selfless. Um, he's becoming caring. He's caring about other people and other, pe other people's feelings. He's becoming aware that he is caring about other people's feelings, which is not what he was like in life. Now, I don't want to give anything else away. I did like this book. I think I gave it a four star. Let me see. Yes, I did end up giving it a four star. Um, I don't want to say why I gave it a four star because I feel like it would be like a spoiler for anybody who is interested, still interested in reading this book. Maybe I could start like some kind of full spoiler series where I just talk about these books and I just give you full spoilers. I go into like a deep dive or something and I just give you spoilers. That would be a really good idea actually because then I could just vent that would be good but yes I did like this book this is a four star again it could be very triggering for some people and there are some scenes in here that are very very sad and very tough I I definitely cried a few tears came out and um, I was definitely sad uh, uh, more than just one time in this book the writing really gets to you for sure TJ Klune really knows how to put some words together and it's definitely he's definitely a 
an author that I want to continue reading. So yes, that is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. The next book that I read was, and you've probably seen it before, Lone Women by Victor Laval. Now I mentioned if you watched my vlog, you know that I probably did give this book three stars. Um, I may want to give it another reread only because I feel like I want to give it another chance and maybe not read it coming from like a horror or expecting horror because for me the horror aspect was not there like there was no horror for me um it, it like there was but it wasn't it wasn't significant it it wasn't it wasn't scary essentially but this story follows uh what was her name again Adelaide this story follows Adelaide who her parents have just died and she has set her house on fire with them inside and it looks like she has murdered them but she hasn't uh something has killed them and adelaide flees looking for a homestead and she carries this secret with her in the form of a suitcase now i've mentioned before that i've looked at um interviews with the author he definitely did a lot of research when it came to um the history behind the women who homes who homestead in montana um there is some history behind that and i'm very interested in looking into that because i think that that's very i think that's very interesting but that's also why i kind of want to give the book a second chance because i kind of want to go at it or read it from maybe a historical fiction aspect as opposed to reading it from a horror aspect i don't know if it would be worth reading it again just because i know what happens but maybe if i give it a second chance maybe i could rethink my rethink my thoughts or rethink certain scenes maybe take a deeper dive or deeper look into the other characters because i was very i was really mostly interested in adelaide there are other characters that came about that i honestly I could care less about i wasn't really caring about them i was like why 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 are we here what i really like about this book actually is that it's like in a western setting i really enjoyed that aspect of the book the western setting you know i could really see it in my head just the story itself wasn't strong enough for me that's why i ended up giving it a three but i may give it a reread so yeah that's Lone Women by Victor Laval. And then the last book that I read was The Haunting of Alejandra by the Castro. And I really enjoyed this book. How much did I give it? I think I gave a four. I'm very picky. I gave everything like, I didn't give anything a five. There were a few months back where I, I was giving everything a five. This one, actually no, this one I gave it a 3.5. This book is about generational trauma, womanhood, and motherhood, and the haunting of motherhood in some ways so we follow alejandra who she is a mother she is a wife and she is going through a very hard time in her life at the moment she is having negative thoughts towards herself and she feels that she has lost herself because of motherhood and the pressures of motherhood and she loves her children dearly but for some reason she just cannot she cannot get a uh, she cannot get rid of these negative feelings she has towards herself and as a result of these negative feelings she starts to see this dark entity called la llorona who is a mexican mythical ghost who is said to be a ghost in the form of this woman who as a human had drowned her children. This could be very triggering for anybody who is going through a tough time so please read um, carefully. This too I don't want to give anything away. It's hard to give anything away. Why would I give it a 3.5 when it's a really good book? Um, I went through this book pretty fast. Um, for me, it was fast-paced. I actually was able to finish it within two days. We were going back and forth between um, 
Alejandra and some of the women in her life who were helping her as well as some characters in the past who have encountered La Llorona. Now why this book wasn't really like strong enough for me or like I felt something was missing was because we were kind of going, we were not kind of, but we were going um, back and forth between time. I, I felt like I wanted to know more about La Llorona um, and not just like a small chapter of it. Um, I felt like certain scene, I felt like there was a certain scene in here that kind of went way too quickly for me and I needed to know more about this entity. That, that's just me though. The men in the in this in this book, um, you knew what they were gonna be like. You knew that they were gonna that they weren't very supportive of the women in their lives, especially Alejandra's husband. He just didn't seem to get that his wife needs help. You know, maybe that's just kind of like a representation of how, you know, a lot of the times women, as women, as mothers, you know, we don't always ask for help. You know, we're expected to just kind of be able to do everything without asking for help. And asking for help could be a sign and maybe a form of weakness. And so, you know, we don't ask for help and you know because taking care of children should be natural or should be ingrained within us but you know an aspect that society people don't talk about a lot of times or that's taboo is that sometimes mothers have a very hard time with their children you know that motherhood could be a very tough experience for some women and it shows right here in this book you know she has three beautiful children that she says she loves so much but yet you know she doesn't feel like she is good enough for them she doesn't feel like she's doing enough for them one of the aspects that v castro is trying to show us is that you know we can't we can't be good for other people if we're not good for ourselves um selfishness is not something that is encouraged in motherhood but it's not about being selfish it's about doing for yourself making sure that you are happy because if you are happy then your children will be happy and if you're not happy they are going to be unhappy as well and so i think that's you know kind of what you know she was trying to show if you like books about motherhood and womanhood reading about the experience of motherhood or a different experience of motherhood then this is a book you should pick up but again please remember that you know the certain uh, topics in here could be very triggering so please be aware of that when you're reading the book and that is The Haunting of Alejandra by V. Castro and also, ooh, let's look at this cover. Let's just take a moment for this cover because because it needs a, a little bit of love. Those are the five books that I read in May. I was going to say June, but it's, no, it's June now. I read those in May. Uh, so those are the five books that I read in May. If you liked any of these books, you know, share your comments down below and let me know what you thought of them. Spoiler free, no spoilers. Try not to spoil anything for anybody just so they can, you know, enjoy the book. I tried my best to give non-spoilers if it's possible to do so. I do my best. But uh, yeah, so that is it for today. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. You can also follow me on Instagram at Serena Loves Reading. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!